Towards the end of 2018, you mentioned that you guarantee you could make a 50% annual return if you had to start again with under $1 million. The question is, if tomorrow you woke up in the body... Your body. 20-year-old yeah, American. Your body. <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> and your name was now Warren a la carte. <laughs> and you had some money to invest on a full-time basis. What method or methods would you use to achieve that return? Would it involve flipping through 20,000 pages of Moody's manual or similar publications, yep. or finding, you know, you know to find sticker butts? Or would it be hunting for great companies at a fair price as Mr. Munger would? Or would it be a combination of both with opportunity costs serving as the final arbiter of which method to use, given that your investing opportunity has now broadened significantly? Thank you, Kaufman Kapp. Good question, I'm glad you came. And the, uh, the answer would be, in my particular case, it would be going through the 20,000 pages. And since we were talking about railroads, you know, I went through the Moody's Transportation Manual a couple of times. That was 1,500 or 2,000 pages, or well, probably 1,500 pages. And I found all kinds of interesting things when I was 50 or 20 or 21. And I don't imagine here, there's anybody here that knows about the Green Bay and Western Railroad Company, but. Uh, there were hundreds and hundreds of railroad companies, and I like to read about every one of them. The Green Bay and Western, uh, in those days, everybody had a nickname for, for railroads. I mean, that was, that was just what Northern Pacific was the nipper, and, and you know, the, uh, Phoebe Snow was uh, one of them in the East that used to go up to Cornell. And uh, the Green Bay and Western was known as grab baggage and walk. Uh, and uh, GB and W, and they had an, they had a bond that was actually the common stock, and they had a common stock that was actually a bond, and you know that that could lead to unusual things, but they wouldn't lead to unusual things that would work for you with many millions of dollars. But but if you collected a whole bunch of those, which. I set out to do, and actually that's what impressed Charlie when I first met him, because I knew all the details of all these little companies on the West Coast that he thought I would never have heard of, but, but I knew about the Los Angeles Athletic Club or whatever it might be, and he thought he was the only one that knew about that, and that, that, that uh, became an instant point of connection. So to answer your question, uh, I would I would... I, I don't know what the equivalent of Moody's manuals or anything would be now, but I would, I would try and know everything about everything, small, and I would find something, and with a million dollars you could earn 50 percent a year. But you have to be in love with the subject. Uh, you, you can't just be in love with the money. You really got to just find it like a, tr you know, essentially like, you know, people find other things in other fields because they just love looking for them. A biologist looks for something because they, they, may, they, they want to find something. They, uh, and that's built into, the, I, I don't know how the human brain works that much, and I don't think anybody not, understands too well how the human brain works, but, but there's different people that, that uh, just find it exciting to expand their knowledge in a given area. We, uh, you know, I know great bridge players, I know Great chess players, actually. Uh, Kasparov came to Omaha and met Mrs. B. Uh, I've had the luck of, of meeting a lot of people that are unbelievably smart in their own arena and do some unbelievably dumb things in other areas. So all I know is the human brain is complicated, and but it does its best when it, you find out what your brain is really suited for, and then you just uh, pound the hell out from that point. And that's what I would be doing if I, if I had a small amount of money and I wanted to make 50% a year. But I also wanted to just play the game. And uh, you can't do it if you really, if you don't find the, the game of interest, whether it's bridge or whether, you know, whatever it may be, chess or 
in this case, finding securities that are undervalued. But it sounds to me like you're on the right track. I mean, anybody that'll come all the way to this annual meeting has got something in their mind other than bridge or chess. Uh, so I'm glad you came and come again next year.